<laughs> so wise. <laughs> Go to the clip! <laughs> now it's time for celebrity book readings. Tonight, Michael Ian Black reads from his book, You Are Not Doing It Right. Thank you. Hello. So this is my book, You're Not Doing It Right, Tales of uh, Marriage, Sex, Death, and Other Humiliations. And I will read a little bit from it. To this point in the book, I've met my wife, and we've decided to have a baby, and then it took a little while. Now we finally had a baby, and the baby is awful. <laughs> when the middle of the night comes, as it must, and his cries come, as they must, we lie in bed arguing over whose turn it is to get up with the baby. It is always the other person's turn. <laughs> Your turn, we say to each other while he wails. Your turn. 10 or 20 minutes might go by like this, neither of us willing to move, the tension growing between us with each wailing exhalation. They say if you just let babies cry, they will eventually cry themselves out. This is not true. <laughs> Not only will babies not cry themselves out, but the act of crying actually slows down time itself. <laughs> Finally, one of us surrenders, throwing off the warm blankets so as to let as much cold air into the bed as possible. <laughs> I hate you, she will say to me, or I will say to her, and it won't be said in a whimsical, aren't we cute, Ally McBeal sort of way. The hatred we have for each other during those cold hours when somebody must tend to the hellion she created <laughs> is a visceral, concentrated hate. It is to normal hate what a diamond is to a lump of coal. <laughs> the only thing preventing us from strangling each other in moments like these is the knowledge that doing so would mean even more time alone with the baby for whichever one of us is left. <laughs> Your turn, says Martha. It is always my turn. Damn it. I get up to comfort my stupid baby. <laughs> Each night, I pace the hallway with my son leaning against my shoulder and jiggle him as we walk. Shh, shh, shh. I whisper in time with my jiggles. Shh, shh, shh. Sometimes I do it to the tune of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, or Mary Had a Little Lamb, or Mr. Brownstone by Guns N' Roses. <laughs> Constant movement helps, constant movement, and Martha's boobs, which are sore from overuse, her nipples tender and stretched out. They're starting to look like cocktail wieners. <laughs> As an aside, I should tell you that when I wrote this and I showed it to my wife, uh, she read it and she said, could you please take out the part about my nipples looking like cocktail wieners? And I said, no. I go downstairs and turn on the TV. Every channel is an infomercial. Infomercials for exercise machines and proactive acne medication and no money down real estate seminars. I used to think that the reason companies showed infomercials in the middle of the night was that that was the only time the companies could afford to buy airtime. Now I know the reason they show them at that hour is because everything looks desirable when you are delirious from fatigue and the act of picking up a telephone and ordering the amazing thigh and ab rocker is the closest you will come to human contact. <laughs> at this hour, the amazing thigh and ab rocker actually starts to seem like a pretty good solution to most of my problems. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.